I always feel weird when the camera comes on because uh, I always do something that looks like a nervous tick. Uh, so for you guys, um, what I want to go get into here is a little bit of the theory behind equilibrium. Um, and it leads into what we'll be doing uh, really soon, some of the math. And this is a really nice bridge piece. So I want to talk about something called Le Chatelier's Principle. Um, you see me abbreviated a lot LCP, just like I always abbreviate uh, equilibrium EQ. Um, and it's a statement, and it seems really odd at first, because it seems um, almost like it's saying nothing. But it says a whole lot in just a few words. So, and there's a lot of different versions of it. Um, but a great summary is, if a system is at equilibrium, so we're at the point now where the rate going forward equals the rate going back. Again, not amounts of reactants and products, the products, but the rate going forward is the same. So at equilibrium, if a system is stressed, meaning you mess with the system, so forward and back has gone the same, and now you do something to disturb it, to disrupt with it. Um, the system will react to resolve the stress. And that's a little bit weird at first, um, until you kind of understand what it means. So let me put my other erase board here for a second. What's going on, guys, is that you realize that when you're at equilibrium and the forward and backward transfer is the same, and if you think of the fish tanks um, that my daughter and I had, is that once the forward and backward transfer is the same, you have a ratio between products and reactants. It's a fraction at that point. And it's not going to change. The amount of products in relation to the amount of reactants is going to be stable. So what that's saying is, is that you're at equilibrium. You do something to disturb equilibrium. The system is going to try to keep the ratio of products and reactants the same at that point. So whatever that fraction of products and reactants is, it could be more products compared to reactants. It could be more reactants compared to products. It could be a fraction that gives you a number of one. So if you do something to disturb the system where you pull reactants out, it could be something you do something to it where you add products. It doesn't matter. The system's going to try to keep that fraction the same. Oh, so you can't, you're not changing the arrows when you disturb the system. You've done something to change one of the products or one of the reactants or some other variable. Well, the system's going to try to then put that fraction back to the same number. Mm. Well, what are some things that you can do or mess with to control equilibrium? Got three variables. Got three things to mess with. Well, it's two and a half. You can mess with concentration. And by that means add or take away. products and reactants. So if you think about things in a container, the reactions at equilibrium, you could then put a hose in there and add more reactants and try to kickstart the process again, or you could take a straw and try to suck something out of there. Okay, that makes sense then. Or you can change concentration by shrinking things. You think about it, when you've got concentration, it's moles divided by volume. Well, if you can't add more stuff or take away stuff, change the container. Okay. Next thing is, is you can change temp. And remember, reactions are either 
endo or exothermic. Oh, if you remember way back in the first semester, we talked about you can think of temperature as a reactant or as a product. Endothermic reactions require heat. This is like a reactant. Exothermic reactions give off heat. Oh, this is like a product. So that's something we can mess with. The last thing only goes for gases um, and only goes for if you have different moles on the other side of the equation. You can mess with pressure, which is in a way messing with volume. Um, and we'll get into this one in a second. If you've got more moles on one side of the equation as opposed to the other, and you change the volume of the container, the system kind of would, not that systems have emotions, but they prefer and want to try to keep things at a stable pressure. Well, if you expand a container and you're trying to keep pressure stable, you need more particles to do that. If you're trying to keep pressure stable and there's fewer moles on one side of the equation, well, you, and you shrink the container, you're going to need fewer particles. So that's going to favor the side that has fewer particles. So I'll spend a little bit of time on that one in, in a sec. So I'm going to show a couple of examples with a made-up equation here, and hopefully that ex, uh, helps explain Le Chatelier's principle here. Um, and that'll bridge nicely into doing some problems. So I'll be back in a minute, do a few examples for you guys. Hopefully that helps a little bit.